This is WYMT Mountain Sports, your home for the Kentucky Wildcats and local high school sports. The Kentucky softball team set to begin NCAA tournament play tomorrow up in South Bend, Indiana. The Wildcats will take the field against Northwestern in what will be their first game in more than a week. And while an early exit from the SEC tournament was disappointing, everyone agrees the extra practice time has been beneficial for the entire team. We just had more time to focus on the things that we need to focus on. It gets kind of hard during the ground of the season. You know, you play every other day, so it's just been good to be able to slow down and focus a little bit. I like the intensity about the practices. I like the passion. The other thing that was um, from a tactical standpoint, the defense was a lot better. It was a lot cleaner. We were making diving catches. We were um, we were attacking balls that we used to sit back on. And, and I think the postseason is about pitching and defense. And then hopefully you luck out and get those timely hits. So I think the fact that our defense was so clean is what that I like the most about the last week of practice. The softball regular season wraps up this week on the high school circuit. District tournaments beginning next week. Two 15th region teams trying to finish out the season strong. Betsy Lane Lady Cats earned the one seed in the 58th district tournament, taking on the Pikeville Lady Panthers. Bottom first we go. A runner on third for Emily Hughes gets down the bunt. She's safe at first. Alexis Stanley taps the plate. 1-0 Pikeville lead. Top of the second now. Bases loaded, full of Lady Cats. And the lone senior on the Pikeville roster, Megan Cochran, gets the batter looking for strike three. Same inning, though. Base is still loaded. Brandy Morrow capitalizes. Bloops one over second. Summer Johnson puts Betsy Lane on the board. But the Lady Panthers go on to get the win. 12-5 over Betsy Lane. Some 15th region baseball on the field right next door. The Lawrence County Bulldogs and host Pikeville. One on for Pikeville in the first. But Austin Bailey tallies his first strikeout. Scoreless game after one. Runners on the corners for the Bulldogs in the second. Brad Park. Parks, excuse me, bounces one to the third baseman. Out at first is Parks. But an RBI nonetheless. Brock Turner puts LC on the board 1-0. Bottom two, one on for Peyton Hamilton, pushes one down the first baseline. That's a fair ball. Andrew McNamee with the equalizer, tied up at one after two. And Lawrence County pours on the runs and gets the win, eight to three. The final score, Major League Baseball, Cincinnati Reds hosting San Francisco in the first of four this weekend. Top of the third, Johnny Cueto with the balk with runners on the corners. That forces home a run and the Giants take a two nothing lead. Bottom fifth, bases full of reds for Marlon Bird and Bird singles to right, chasing home two runs. We're all tied up. Now tied at three in the eighth, Bird at it again. A solo home run off Sergio Ramos. That gives Cincinnati a 4-3 lead, and that would be the final score. The Reds win the series opener over the San Francisco Giants. An impressive performance by LeBron James in Game 5 has the Cleveland Cavaliers just one win away from the next round of the NBA playoffs. James and the Cavaliers looking to advance to the Eastern Conference Finals over Chicago. James doing work early, connects on the fall away jumper. That ties things up at four apiece. Watch this play in transition. Mike Dunleavy, the nifty pass to Jimmy Butler for the slam Bulls with a one point lead. Cleveland by four in the second. I am Shumford showing off his range with a couple of trays from the wing. Cavaliers advance to the Eastern Conference Finals, winning game six, 94-73 over the Bulls.